Welcome to this video on the U.S. Army Officer Candidate School, or OCS. I'll be going over OCS and the different subjects that you will study while at OCS, as well as my personal experience and my own personal recommendation. The United States Army commissions over 6,000 officers every year from three different commissioning sources. The United States Military Academy in West Point, New York, or West Point. Numerous Reserve Officers Training Corps ROTC programs at hundreds of colleges across the country, or Officer Candidate School OCS at Fort Benning, Georgia. West Point commissions about 1,000 officers, ROTC commissions about 4,200, and OCS commissions about 800 officers every year. Each commissioning source strives to produce competent, capable officers to lead the many enlisted soldiers in the Army. I was one of the 800 officers to earn a commission from OCS in 2018. OCS has a wide curriculum that teaches candidates to be well-rounded soldiers. The major subjects candidates learn about are land navigation, land nav, operations orders or op boards, squad level tactics, U.S. military, military history, physical training or PT, and leadership. Throughout the three months of OCS, candidates are tested on these subjects and then ranked on an order of merit list or OML. The importance of the OML is to determine how the various branches are distributed. There are 16 Army branches that a candidate can be branched into. Adjutant General, Air Defense Artillery, Armor, Air Aviation, the Chemical Corps, the Corps of Engineers, the Cyber Corps, Field Artillery, or FA, which I branched into, Finance, Infantry, Medical Services, Military Intelligence, or MI, Military Police, or MPs, Ordinance, Quartermaster, Signal Corps, and Transportation. My class graduated at the end of the fiscal year, so we did not have any slots for Aviation, the Cyber Corps, or Medical Services. I recommend going into one of the other commissioning sources if you want to branch into Aviation, the Cyber Corps, or Medical Services, because OCS does not receive many slots for those branches. This meant that we would be branched into one of the other 13 branches. Following is my experience with recommendations on things I wish I had done differently throughout OCS as I earned my commission as a second lieutenant. Admin week. The first week of OCS was an administrative week for the cadre to brief us on their expectations and for us to start the necessary paper paperwork for when we commissioned at the end of the course. Even though it was an admin week, we still had graded events that positioned us on the OML. The first event was the Army Physical Fitness Test, or APFT. I scored in the high 280s out of a possible 300. However, when I checked the OML later that night, I was in the bottom third. I was surprised at how competitive the class was going to be. My class was made up of mostly 09 Sierras instead of prior service. 09 Sierra is the Military Occupational Specialty, MOS, for a soldier who goes to OCS immediately after basic training. Someone who is prior service is a soldier who enlisted in the Army and served for a period of time before going to OCS to earn a commission. It was unusual for a class to have such a high number of 09 Sierra soldiers in an OCS class because most classes have a higher number of candidates who were prior enlisted. One of the best ways to learn at OCS is from the prior enlisted candidate's personal experience. I was lucky enough to be roommates with a 13-year prior enlisted infantryman. This ended up being a huge advantage for me because I learned more army tricks from him than I did from the cadre. Prior enlisted candidates usually find themselves at the top of the OML because they have experience with all the events that we will be graded on, unlike most of the 09 Sierra soldiers. The week ended with a graded obstacle course. We lost points for each obstacle that we failed to negotiate. After the obstacle course, I moved up a little bit on the OML. We had Sunday off to get ready for land nav in the upcoming week. Land navigation or land nav. The second week was focused on land nav. On Monday we went to Red Diamond land nav course to learn navigation skills before being tested on Thursday and Friday. At basic training we received classroom lessons on land nav and tested once outside on a course. However at OCS we would spend an entire week learning land nav skills out, of, out at Red Diamond land nav course. The first iteration took place as a squad on Monday evening. Since we had five people, we found all five points easily. 
The next morning, we had a practice test by ourselves to gauge where everyone was at. I only found three out of five points. Since I needed at least four points, I had to go to remedial training. At remedial training, I received extra instruction from the cadre, and I found the remedial training to be very helpful. On Tuesday evening, we conducted another, another iteration, but in pairs instead of squad. My partner and I found, found all of our points in this iteration, which was a huge confidence boost. Wednesday morning and evening were solo practice tests again. I found all of my points, so I did not have to attend remedial training. This meant that I spent the afternoon practicing assembling and disassembling machine guns because we would be tested at the end of the week. On Thursday morning, we had our first test. I found all five points and passed first time go. This meant, this meant that I could sleep in the next day and not retest. The rest of Thursday, we continued practicing on the machine guns for the upcoming test. There wasn't a Thursday night iteration because we prepared to go back to the barracks on Friday morning. We cleaned up Friday and we were given time to refit for the next week. We were tested on the machine guns on Saturday, on Saturday and I pieced, passed each one easily. Squad level tactics. Officers are expected to have an understanding of basic squad level tactics because officers may need to execute a battle drill while engaged with the enemy. The best way to learn squad tactics is to do squad tactics. This means that we would go to the field for two and a half weeks for squad situational training exercises or squad sticks. Every lane state, every lane starts with an operation order or op board. An op order is a directive to subordinate units given in a five paragraph format. We learn how the five paragraphs cover all the aspects of an operation and best practices when pitching an op. After learning about op boards, we started developing our, our own squad's standard operating procedures, or SOPs, for the battle drills that we would use as squad sticks. A battle drill is a collective action rapidly executed without applying a deliberate decision-making process. This, me this means developing sound SOPs is critical to a squad's success. By developing sound SOPs that the entire squad understands creates a shared understanding that when a member is in any position, the squad can execute a tactical maneuver quickly. You will switch out different positions during squad sticks, so it's important that you have a solid SOP that's refined before you head out for the two and a half week build problem. The first week of squad sticks is practice lanes before getting started with graded lanes the next week. When we finish, when we first arrived at the Squad 6 location, we were given tasks to set up the Tactical Operations Center, or TOC, in our own personal patrol base. On Tuesday, we started the practice lanes. A lane consists of the squad leader pitching an op board before executing battle drills to complete the lane. Half of the company would be executing lanes, while the other half of the company would be filling in on details like playing Op 4 or the opposing force. Op force Op 4 is the enemy that a squad would attack during a lane. Each member of the squad was given the opportunity to be a squad leader and a team leader twice. By the time that we completed our practice lanes, I was confident that our entire squad would pass the next week. Each weekend, we would come back to the weekend refit for the next week. Each candidate would be graded in two squad leader lanes and two team leader lanes. In each lane, one candidate would be the squad leader and two candidates would be the team leaders, Alpha and Bravo. Since we had 10 members in our squad, we knew that we would have at least 20 total graded lanes. During the graded lanes, I passed both of my squad leader lanes and both of my team leader lanes. Are you getting ready to attend Pathfinder School? Having trouble on where to start studying for Pathfinder? Visit the 13 Alpha Etsy shop now for Pathfinder flashcard to aid you in studying and passing Pathfinder School. Branching. The branching ceremony was held the Friday following squad sticks. We filed into a theater in an in OML order. Ten candidates at a, team, at a time would go backstage to find out our branch. The cadre gave you your branch insignia before you go out on stage to announce your branch. I was given cross candidates, which meant I had branch field artillery, my number one choice. 
Now that I had my branch, I needed to pass history so that I could graduate and move on to basic officer leadership course or Bullock. History. OCS history. OCS history class is a three-week in-depth study of American military history. The course covers every major American battle since the Revolutionary War. Doc Campbell, the famous history teacher at OCS, assigned each candidate a battle to research and have talking points prepared. As we walked through history, each time a battle came up, the candidate would stand up and give an overview of their assigned battle and have a discussion with Doc Campbell. Doc Campbell will grill candidates on their battle, and if you were not prepared, he would end the discussion and move on, even if everything was not covered. This could make or break a class if a lot of people were not prepared because critical information could be skipped, and then the whole class would not be, be, would not be prepared for the test. I had the Battle of Midway in the Pacific in World War II. I spent hours reviewing and reading about this battle. I did not want to let down the rest of the class. When it was my day to have my discussion with Doc Campbell, I was prepared, but Doc Campbell decided to brief the lesson because he, because we were close to ending for that particular particular day. I passed the test, the first attempt, but I was one of, but it was one of the most difficult tests I had ever taken. There were some multiple choice, but it was mostly short answer questions. If you pay attention in class, know your assigned battle, and study nightly, you will not have a problem passing the history. Physical training, or PT. PT at OCS was candidate-led. This meant, this meant that a candidate would lead PT for the platoon each morning. This allowed for candidates to experience leading PT before leading soldiers. Each day, a different candidate would lead PT, so we had to collectively make a PT plan so that we did not overwork muscle groups. However, each Friday, we, did, we would do a ruck. In order to pass OCS, you have to complete a 6, 9, and 12 mile ruck. Each week we increased our ruck mileage so that we could meet the graduation requirements. Other than the Friday rucks, we were able to run PT on our own that was approved by CADRE. Conclusion and recommendations. From the beginning of admin week, a candidate must be prepared to compete in graded events for favorable positioning on the OML. Moving into land nav, candidates must pass or they will they risk being dropped from the course. Listening to the cadre, listen to the cadre and take advantage of spending a week on land nav, on the land nav course because this is the most thorough land nav training a soldier will ever receive. Squad sticks is the next big graded event. Do not take squad sticks lightly. This is the most important block of OCS because in the future you may you may be trusted you may be thrust into a situation where you have to lead a squad in a real firefight. After squad sticks, you'll find out which branch you will pursue after OCS. Just because you branch does not mean that it's over. If you fail history, you will, you will recycle an OCS. History is no joke. The best recommendation I can give to anyone wanting to attend OCS is to diligently take notes. OCS is 95% classroom, so soak up as much knowledge as possible. You will learn so much about leadership in Army schools that you will need notes so that you refer to them later. I recently went through my OCS notes and I was stunned at how much information I had learned throughout the course. The next piece of advice I would give anyone about to attend OCS would be to go to Commandos for the packing list. The OCS packing list is pretty long. However, Commandos is a one-stop shop for, any, for everything on the list. It is convenient and the customer service is unparalleled. OCS has produced capable leaders and will continue to do for many years. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Or don't, it's up to you. Visit our 13 Alpha Etsy shop to find flashcards and other aids to help you get through various Army schools. Follow us on Instagram at 13Alpha13A, I Twitter, at 13 Alpha 13 and on Facebook at 13 Alpha. Thank you.